The port's mandate is to provide the infrastructure our customers need to move product in and out of Texas, fulfilling our mission of leveraging commerce to drive prosperity. The Port of Corpus Christi is a major player in global trade, with $25 billion per year. Highlighted are the countries to and from whom cargo is shipped via the Port of Corpus Christi. Today we are sharing a visual update of the big project growth along our ship channel. From this map depicting the reaches, you can see all 35 miles of our channel. And one of our competitive advantages is the relatively short distance from docks along the La Quinta and Inner Harbor channels to deep water. We'll start outside the jetties at Port A, sail the six miles up the La Quinta channel, then back into the Corpus Christi ship channel, and finally up to the Inner Harbor. The presentation incorporates video provided by the Aransas Corpus Christi Harbor pilots, our communications staff flying drones and wearing GoPros, and our customers. This is the first time to use all of these technologies and software together. So here goes. The pilot is boarding the ship outside of the jetties and is heading to Port Aransas, Harbor Island, and the Port A Ferry. It took the port and the previous owners of Harbor Island 12 years and over $9 million for the tank removal, demolition, asbestos abatement, and remediation required to restore Harbor Island to industrial standards. Harbor Island, with its 215 acres suitable for industrial development and its deep water channel access, may be the region's next big win. When the ban on crude exports is lifted, Harbor Island may very well be the Gulf of Mexico's prime site for a crude export terminal. We're going to use a time-lapsed video to travel the six miles up La Quinta Channel. As the video is streaming, note Gulf Marine, Flint Hills Docks, Oxy Ingleside Energy Center, and Kiewit. By the way, Kiewit is building another large topside for Shell, the Appomattox Project, and they're currently working on the largest barge in the world. Sherwin Alumina, DuPont, and OxyChem have been the mainstays of the La Quinta Channel for decades. With the $40 million investment the port and federal government made to extend and deepen the La Quinta Channel, the coastal bend has become one of the fastest-growing economies in Texas and the U.S. This ship is the first to arrive at First Alpini's new dock in July of this year. First in our big project update is Oxy Ingleside's ethylene facility. You're looking at a $1.5 billion investment by Oxy and their partner, Mexichem, to produce 1.5 billion tons of ethylene a year. This project should come online by first quarter 2017. Chenier is now permitted for phases 1 and 2, and as you can see, construction has begun. The Chenier Highway 361 exit is now open. Chenier has started the permitting process for Phase 3. With a projected investment of between $18 and $20 billion, Chenier comprises half of the exponential growth this region is experiencing. Tianjin Pipe Company will complete Phase 2 of its 1.6 million square foot facility and will begin operations in 2016. This project is the single largest Chinese investment in the U.S. and has generated substantial interest from other companies wanting to co-locate close to TPCO. First Alpini has moved with warp speed, especially considering all their rain delays. They are projecting that construction will be finished this year. They currently have nearly 1,900 workers on site. First Alpini's production system maximizes raw material efficiency with substantial emissions reductions. Its covered storage is the size of six football fields, and it's a massive white building which is actually visible from the Harbor Bridge. Another aside on First Alpini is that 25% of their project investment has been dedicated to exceeding environmental standards. 
This view from the K. Bailey Hutchison Road going into the La Quinta Trade Gateway goes by our anchor tenant, Gulf Cotton Compress. This facility is very important to the economy of Texas, handling two-thirds of all cotton grown south of I-10. You're now flying over the beneficial use site just south of the Channel Extension and Turning Basin. The site has nearly 200 acres of shallow water habitat and is being planted with sea grasses. We're now flying over the La Quinta Dock site. This 3D artist rendering depicts what it may be soon, a multi-purpose terminal with 15 acres of storage and a 1,000-foot dock. The dock is part of the port's Federal Tiger Grant application. The Commission's challenge is to anticipate and provide infrastructure needed by current and future port users. The investments in the JFC, rail yards, and most especially La Quinta Channel have helped attract the region's $40 billion in new business. To sustain growth, the port must remain competitive. Making strategic infrastructure investments to provide customers the most efficient and cost-effective option for moving their product. Deepening and widening the Corpus Christi Ship Channel is the most critical and immediate infrastructure need for the port and our customers. The projected cost of the channel improvement project is $300 million. The project is authorized and awaiting congressional appropriation for the 50% federal cost share. A couple of highlights include deepening to 52 feet, widening to 530 feet, adding 200-foot barge shelves on either side of the channel, and widening and deepening inner harbor turning basins. Ships are getting bigger. Customers are able to realize cost savings from moving more cargo in fewer vessels. A fully laden Suez Max can carry 36% more cargo than an Aframax, with increased cargo value of $27.5 million per ship. Deepening the channel to 52 feet will allow the port to accommodate most of the world's shipping fleet. Current tankers, fully laden, without having to lighter, and the larger Suez Max vessels coming through the expanded Panama Canal. Not to be overlooked, increased safety will result from better separation between ships, barges, and meeting ships. Additionally, a wider channel with barge shelves should ease the one-way and daylight-only traffic restrictions and provide increased channel efficiency for our customers. The port is in a strong financial position. This slide should be very reassuring to our customers. Revenue projections confirm financial capacity for the required 50% local match for deepening and widening the ship channel without requiring additional assessments on port users. Additionally, the just completed Corps of Engineers deepening, widening, reevaluation confirms $600 million in transportation reductions for port users over the 50 year life of the project. The Channel Improvement Project is the most critical infrastructure investment of the next decade for the future prosperity of this region. The days of federal earmarks are gone. All of us, industry and community leaders, elected officials, will need all of our collective political muscle to secure the federal funding match for the port's 50% cost share, hopefully within the next year. And now for a time-lapse trip of the Inner Harbor. Watch for the familiar landmarks. Don't blink because you will complete a two-hour sail in about 30 seconds. Here is an update on the growth along the Inner Harbor. As the daily traffic count approaches 60,000 vehicles a day, we need a safer, wider, and structurally sound harbor bridge. 
As soon as the Federal Highway Administration issues the record of decision, construction will begin with completion in 2020. The new bridge has an air draft to match the Panama Canal Bridge of the Americas. It truly is a hundred-year bridge. Martin Midstream resourcefully converted public cargo dock 10 into a temporary oil dock and will be relocating to a permanent location on the Inner Harbor when construction on the Harbor Bridge commences. The Commission just granted New Star a lease to build a dock capable of handling the Suez Max class vessels, which can carry up to 1 million barrels of crude. New Star is one of the port's customers needing the 52 foot depth as soon as possible. Valero, Flint Hills, and Sitco have, and continue to be, the foundation of the port industry's economy. These partners have grown with the port, incorporating new technologies to reduce emissions and to expand in response to the Eagle Ford. They have made significant capital investments to be able to process domestic crude. Largest ship to call in the Inner Harbor was the crude oil tanker Mia Marguerite, over a thousand feet long. It is seen here going under the Tule Lake Lift Bridge. The Tule Lake Lift Bridge was removed. Thought you might like to see that video again. But the foundations remain and constitute a navigation choke point. Although we are seeking federal and state cost sharing, the Commission has budgeted $18 million and is proceeding with the permitting for foundation removal, another significant infrastructure investment that will improve operational efficiencies for the port's customers. Reorienting you on the ship channel, we are heading up to M&G, the former Driscoll property. Made possible by the Joe Fulton Corridor and Phase 1 of the Nueces River Rail Yard. And then was the impetus for Phase 2 of the Nueces River Rail Yard. Here you can see pilings that are going in and the site is getting ready for M&G. We have all seen a proliferation of tanks. One of our infrastructure challenges is to quantify projected storage capacity needs and land requirements. We're now approaching 20 million barrels of storage capacity in Corpus Christi, a significant growth metric over the 7.7 .7 million barrels in 2013. Nueces River Rail Yard Phase 1 is operational and Phase 2 is under construction. When complete at the end of 2016, Nueces River Rail Yard will have eight 8,000 long unit train sidings, the best rail facility on the Gulf Coast. With pipeline and interstate connectivity to I-37 and I-69, Nueces River Rail Yard adds significantly to the multimodal value of the port. Demand for ship channel access and pressure for increased storage capacity as well as increased volumes of throughput, have led to significant inner harbor investments. The port and our customers have been repurposing existing underutilized facilities, acquiring additional land, and building new docks and barge mooring areas. The following slides track the state of the port, but to summarize, the state of the port is very healthy. Tonnage is up 20% in the last two years, and year-to-date tonnage is up 12%. Barge and ship movements are up 40%, another metric illustrating the need for the Channel Improvement Project. Third-party validation of the state of the port came from Standard & Poor's and Moody's. Note our ratings and the quotes on the port's strength. Operating revenues are projected to increase steadily, but the notable on this slide is the acceleration of capital projects. To that point, the Commission and staff have identified over $1 billion of capital infrastructure investments to be made over the next decade. 
Port Operations is committed to creating a culture of fiscal discipline and operational efficiency. We see our greatest commercial growth opportunities in the areas identified on this slide. The goal of the strategic plan has been to ensure sustainable growth. The Commission has recognized the need for additional land to accommodate future growth. Planning for expanded facilities for both port security and port administration offices is well underway. This year, the port stood up a new emergency management department to have the port prepared for any catastrophic event, natural or man-made, ready to minimize the impact and resume operations as quickly as possible. Environmental stewardship continues to be a core value. It protects our people and our assets, and it's just good business. We are watching carefully the EPA's ozone proposals. Fortunately, the region is at 62 parts per billion, and we remain in attainment. The state of the port is also the state of the coastal bend, and again, it's good news. This data on this WOW slide was provided by the Corpus Christi Regional Economic Development Corporation. And note that these are projected additional tax revenues for the coastal bend from new regional investors. So for the next decade, it's at $1.3 billion. And the next slide gives you some detail. And the next slide shows you 2024 to 2034, an additional $2.5 billion in tax revenue for jurisdictions in the coastal bend. These projections forecast stability for the port, even with lower oil prices. And uh, the slide was prepared on August 19, 2015, and you can see the, the effect or the impact of the repeal of the crude export ban. $25 billion in trade flows through the Port of Corpus Christi. Commodities, mostly energy-related. The list of those who move our port is long. My fellow commissioners, Charlie Zahn, Barbara Canales, David Engel, Rick Valls, Dick Bowers, and Wayne Squires. The previous commissioners and their chairmen. My mentors, Chairman Joe Fulton, Chairman Ruben Benilla, and Chairman Mike Carroll. The port's executive director for 21 years, John LaRue, and his extremely talented port staff, 198 employees with an average tenure of 12 years. Key to our success has been the advocacy of the elected and appointed officials of San Patricio and Nueces County, our state legislators, and our congressional delegation, creating a pro-business culture attractive to companies considering expansion or relocation in the coastal bend. And finally, there are the visionaries, the people who continuously invest in the vibrancy of this community, its businesses, health care, culture, environmental quality, infrastructure, charities, military bases, and education, partnering with the Port of Corpus Christi to sustain the region's prosperity.